Hey guys, I figured I'd make a little bit more upbeat video after a few of my uh, tragic stories I had the last few weeks. So this was a pretty cool trip. We did a dog retreat. We actually tried first in a Tibetan area and then moved it a little closer to Chengdu, but uh, it was a great time. We had about 22 people or something like that and about 15 or 16 dogs. And uh, luckily everything went pretty well. Like I mentioned, we first tried out um, in this really cool place I was at a few months ago out in Aba, kind of near Wenchuan. There's a uh, this place by the river with like some nice cabins and stuff. And the, it would, it's a good spot because the dogs can, you know, run around in that area. You know, it'd be just a cool place to do a party and stuff. Um, whereas the other place we went is cool too, but you know, there's like a lot of slippery rocks around and stuff like that. So it's a little bit more difficult. And so, you know, over a month ago, I recontacted that guy and I asked if we could come out and he checked with the police because in these Tibetan areas, it's more difficult. And he said, okay, you know, you could uh, come out. The guy said, it's okay, as long as we have a COVID test beforehand, right? And then about three, four weeks ago is when Chengdu had about, I mean, it's only like eight cases of COVID, but that's enough to prevent them from going to that region, basically. He's like, oh no, you got to delay it. You've got eight whole cases of Chengdu, right? And so I was like, all right, guys, let's just delay this for like three weeks. And so, you know, three weeks goes by and then he just sends me another message from the government. It's like an announcement to like all the hotels in that area. And it's like, don't take any foreigners, basically, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's hilarious to me anyway, because there cannot be more than like a hundred foreigners that can make it into China each month or, or maybe in the last few months. I mean, it's super, super difficult unless you're like a diplomat or at a special school or a special uh, company, super hard to, hard to get in. You have to get a long quarantine and stuff, but there are hundreds of thousands of not millions of Chinese people still coming and going. Um, that also do quarantine, but it's more likely that if there is any outbreaks that has nothing to do with foreigners themselves, it's because Chinese people were, were in foreign countries. That aspect's true. But they just are like, oh, oh, don't take any foreigners all the time, you know, the last couple of years, this kind of thing. Anyway, so we, um, we thought of the dog retreat idea because um, it's obviously difficult for people to, um, you know, travel around with dogs. You can't easily like go on the metro or get a taxi. Uh, most nice hotels don't want to take them or buses. If you have a dog, it's going to be pretty difficult to get transportation in hotels and everything like that. But good thing is, is um, actually on my trips for a while, for like over a year, I've had people bring animals, you know, bring their dogs basically, because um, it's not a problem for me. I don't mind bringing them in the van. And luckily, the one driver who usually takes us on the bus is pretty cool with it. So um, there are some bus companies that won't take them and nicer hotels might not, but I'm usually in the countryside or in some smaller areas. They really don't mind. So, uh, so that's pretty cool. And so I uh, linked up with a couple of friends who have like basically a school. Um, they're teaching like Chinese online and stuff like that. And they have a bunch of foreigners and people here they know with dogs. So I was like, let's team up to do this trip. It's good for me to team up as well because um, a lot of the time I can only get like 12 to 15 people on the bus, um, which isn't enough. Cause you know, the bus could take like 30 people and the cost, you know, it's a few hundred dollars. And so um, if I take people in the van, I can only take seven people and the gas and everything's super cheap. You know, so I get up to like a dozen people and I'm like, no, I'd like to get at least like 20, you know? So it's kind of good to um, link up with someone else for that aspect. So anyway, we headed out of town. We met in the morning uh, in Chengdu and headed out from Yulin. And, uh, you know, after about an hour and a half or so, we, uh, we got lunch and, you know, there weren't any issues with the dogs. You know, they were hanging out outside the bus for a few minutes and they were fine on the bus. And um, in the restaurant, the people were friendly, no issues. And then um, after lunch, it was only about another uh, 20 minutes to this little waterfall area, which um, I didn't actually find this one. Um, I'd been exploring this area for a couple of years when I first got here, looking for a good swimming hole. And there's some swimming areas, but nothing really that good. And this was one of the better ones that a Chinese guy sent me uh, a couple of years ago. And so basically you just walk up the road for about um, 10, 15 minutes, and then you go off on this little trail for about another 15 minutes or so. And there's kind of a steep way down to the water there. And there's a lot of slippery rocks and stuff, uh, but it's a cool area to swim and hang out. Um, at this time of year, uh, it hasn't rained yet because it's still the uh, like mid-March, the rainy season hasn't started. So it hasn't rained in like, 
you know, I mean, it's only rained a handful of times in, in five or six months. You know, you get all of the rain in like May, June, July, August, September, like the monsoon season, the summer. And so, yeah, we hung out there for, you know, about three, four hours or so. And uh, people could have hiked around or explore there a little bit. And then we got on the bus. Um, and actually, it's kind of funny because as the crow flies, you could get up to our hotel that's on top of the mountain um, in less than like three kilometers. I mean, my buddy ended up taking his motorcycle straight from there and it's it's not far at all. You know, he got there in like within 20 minutes, but we have to go all the way around to like take this small road up the mountain, which takes uh, almost an hour basically, uh, cause the bus can't get up that small road. And I thought the bus driver would be able to go up the other one as well. And he did mention to me that we couldn't and then the hotel told me that the bus could and then i've also seen buses up there so i was a little confused so i, I pushed my driver to like kind of talk to them my understanding was that he was going to take us most of the way and then we we're going to walk part of it but even before we started the climb he like pulled over and he's like oh no we'll get shuttles and i, I like didn't know for sure we were doing that and uh, it wasn't too big of a deal we know we waited like 20 minutes and uh three shuttles came and we had exactly 18 people and each of them can take six people um but not including like the fact that we've got all the bags and you know and the dogs and the one girl uh Sophie had two big uh, akita dogs and so we had to cram everyone in there to take that uh 35 minute road you know a steep climbs you know a lot of switchbacks and stuff up to the top but the place is awesome up there super nice views and you know you had the uh cherry blossoms just uh going now and blooming and uh yeah we had a nice dinner i did a barbecue with some burgers and ribs and salmon sausages and i had the restaurant do some veggie dishes and stuff a few people were vegan uh so i brought actually i had veggie burgers too and my buddy sam came i was like why don't you come and dj you know for like a free trip and stuff uh with his friend and so yeah he was rocking out the music and uh they eventually told us around 11 to stop but um, he actually went down to like a little house below and kept till about 2.30. I was already asleep like most people. And then, yeah, the next morning, unfortunately, it was raining. Um, so it was a little bit of a bummer, but I figured, you know, we could still have lunch there, which was really good. And then the plan was to hike down, which is about an hour, um, hour and a half. Uh, but because, you know, it was kind of wet, most people didn't want their dogs to be all dirty. So they ended up taking the shuttles and then four of us ended up walking down, which was real steep and slippery especially the first part um but but it was worth it. it was really pretty and the rain wasn't too heavy so it wasn't bad i got down an hour a couple of girls maybe took an hour and a half but it's kind of worth going down to the road there so it's definitely the uh best trip of the year so far um you know besides the rain and stuff we all had a really good time and none of the dogs had any problems you know there was a couple times where like you know the dogs are chasing the chickens and stuff and uh speaking of chickens and roosters i woke up at sunday morning at I should have known it because when I got the room, I, you know, I'm kind of busy. I know I got to cook and do food. And I saw all the roosters right outside my door. Um, everyone else was down about three, four hundred meters on the other side. And I saw the fucking dozen roosters there. And I was like, yeah, no big deal. And it's like 615, 630. And uh, yeah, so I wasn't too happy about that. I'll make sure I uh, stay in another room next time. Anyway, so yeah, great trip. And um, hopefully I'll have a few more left. Uh, I don't know with my schedule how things will go, but I'm gonna try to make some more cool videos about China before I take off in the summer or fall or whatever. So anyway, if you like the content, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, goodbye.